Hi again folks, how are you doing? Uh, I thought I'd give you a bit of a layout update because I've been doing quite a bit of work on my layout recently. Um, once I got my shuttle working, if you'd seen the, the video I've done on uh, getting my shuttle working, um, I really want to do a, a, something else for, for running trains end to end. Um, now, now my layout, because of space restriction, is, is, is a bit odd. I've got like a, you know, a terminal station uh, there and a small terminal station there. Ideally, what you want is a big through station in the middle of your layout, but because I wanted a branch line and a return loop, that kind of kills that. So I put my station to the side um, with a small uh, main line section here, which I've just extended actually. Um, but I'll come back to my platforms in a minute. So I've got my shuttle working for running DMUs back and forth, which is fine. But um, when it came to running small like branch line locomotives, like a little tank engine with a couple of coaches or something from one station to the other, I had a little bit of a problem because I've not got turntable or any kind of loop for turning the, the locomotives around. So I thought to be more realistic, what I need to do is run a locomotive from one station to the other, isolate that locomotive, uncouple it and bring another locomotive into the other end of the coaches to bring it back to the station and repeat. So take uh, you know coaches back and forth from one station to another using two locomotives, a bit like the real thing. So, but to do that, I thought I'm gonna have to add some isolated sections into my, my sidings. And that got complicated because I've got the, the shuttle working. So, <laughs> without going into too much technical detail, what it means is having the shuttle wired in to, to the layout means there's a connection uh, between my sidings and, and my layout. So it all gets a bit weird. I can run the shuttle and nothing else, but for running the locomotives from one end to the other and not have trains magically start working uh, in the other sidings, um, I needed to do something to, to avoid that. So what I've done for my shuttle, I've uh, put switches in for all the wires for the shuttle. So basically, Oops, that's the uh, power cable gone. So basically, I have to switch these on if I want to use my shuttle. Not using the shuttle, we switch these off. If I didn't have uh, these, what I'm calling uh, shuttle breakers, shuttle breakers one to four, if I didn't have these, uh, what would happen was when I'm trying to run a train, you know, even with the shuttle off and unplugged, when I'm trying to run a train, um, anything, any locomotive sitting in this siding here will start to move, regardless of the setting of my points because you know this is connected to that um, so I have to break it you know, I have to break that circuit using these switches for doing the isolated sections let me just push this locomotive back just now I've got an isolated section in here and I'm using the existing isolated section in the uh, in that siding over there which is used for the shuttle um, this isolated section here works for the shuttle but I've also put a switch over it. I've put a switch over that one as well. And I've also put a, an isolated section in here, and that also has a switch. Now I was gonna use uh, lever switches like these ones, but I didn't have any more. And I thought, well, as much as I like these levers for points and things, I'm not that keen on them for, for uh, switching things on and off. So I decided to add some just simple on off switches so this will switch station one, platform two, on and off. This will stitch, stitch. This will switch station two, platform one, on and off. Station one, platform four, which is that one there. And the maintenance line, which is where my engine shed is. So I can switch those sidings on and off, cut the power to them, so I can run the trains back and forward. So, we'll demonstrate this if I switch station 1, platform 2 on, and station 2, platform 1 on. My points are all set. I'm running my little J52, which is LNER with these old BR, or somebody said these are LMS coaches. Anyway, doesn't matter. My railway is a, a heritage railway. I can run anything. So we'll run this to the station. So 
So we run that to there, I then have to come around and do a manual uncoupling. Try to do this with one hand, like that. And then I'm going to switch station 2 platform 1 off. Uh, so now when I turn on the power, that locomotive is not going. Then I'm going to bring my G36 out. Pick up the coaches. And this will pull the train back to where it came. So now that's there, I can switch that siding off using that switch and I can switch this one back on using that one and I can bring this one back. And then once the passengers are all on board, we can pull it away again. So that adds quite a bit of fun to the layout, um, not just having the, the shuttle working end to end, but you know being able to take some coaches round to one station, uncouple, send another locomotive to, to pick them up, to pull them back in the other direction. And uh, that's actually quite good fun. It's, it's quite interactive. You know, I don't mind manually uh, uncoupling. Of course, if you're DCC, you don't have to worry about isolating your track. You know, your trains work independently anyway, so that's the big advantage of DCC. But if you're DC, you're going to have to Put isolated sections into your track which is a bit of work but you know that's all part of the fun so i wouldn't be surprised if uh, someone suggests using a cab control for, for this layout um uh, yes it would be an option but you know i've uh, i've done all my wiring and i've got my controller and everything's working so cab control uh, you know probably would have been a better way to do it but you know once you start you tend to build on what you've got and to go back and completely you know, rewire this and get uh, controllers for cab control and stuff would be a lot of work and a lot of money. So not right now, I'm afraid. I've been rethinking my platforms though. As I say, I extended this one out, but I'm actually going to remove this entire section and, and have this whole platform coming out a little bit of a, a bit, this is a very gentle curve, so I can get away with it. I don't like um, curved sections. That's why I don't have a curved section here. Um, because it yeah, it just causes a bit of a problem where the, the curve ends. You know, the locomotives tend to overhang. Um so I just let you know cut this entire part out. Um but I think I'll extend this out and have a gentle curve going right right up to here. And over there I'm gonna extend this platform out a bit as well. Um however I've been rethinking these platforms completely because these are the Metcalf card ones. Um, and, the, you know, they make nice platforms, but they're not high enough. Um, let me just demonstrate. You can see there's, there's a huge step from the platform up to the doors. Um, these platforms should be higher up. So I think I'm going to completely rebuild my platforms. I'm going to get some new uh, Metcalf kits and rebuild my platforms completely. Uh, quite a bit of work to do, but that really annoys me. You know, these platforms should be higher up. We've also added a bit of fencing in here um, and a little walkway across the track there. Um, I really want to get more people in and some cars and things like that, but you know the price of all that is just, just horrific. And I want some more trees and I want to do some more work up on the hill here in the village. Um, but yeah, I think the next job is to build new platforms and replace these ones. And I think I might go for the uh, you know the red brick ones. I think they just look nicer than these grey ones. So I get asked a lot if I have a track plan of this layout. Um, I don't, is the simple answer. Um, I sort of did a, an initial design using any rail software, just to get the basic, uh, you know, the, the the two loops in place and the return loop and the branch line, just to see how that would all fit together. Um, but other than that, you know, it really has just been built off the top of my head. 
But my advice to anyone starting out, you know, building the first layer is, is don't, you know, experiment. Try different ideas of your own. Uh, you know, try a, f a few of the track plans that are available and um, just to get an understanding of how things work. But then, um, you know, make the most of your space and uh, just have a bit of fun and be creative. So that's what I've been up to with the layout. Catch us later, guys.